Hello everybody, today we are going to talk about cardiac stress testing, um, the basic concepts and which one are the right tests uh, to be picked for your patient. So if you look at the right side here, uh, like a paragraph one, um, there are a lot of things, like the stress test can help you with that. You can do a Lexi scan with myocardial perfusion, the SPECT, the PET scan with coronary flow, MRI for late gadolinium enhancement for viability or FTG, which is a radioactive glucose uptake by the myocardium, fractional flow reserve. So you can make it as complicated as possible by using all these wordings, uh, which we will not be doing. So we will just boil it down to the basic concepts. Of course, once you know the basic concepts, you can read more and the advancement and the more complex things that you can do with the stress test. But for the sake of this talk, we're gonna keep it very simple. So let's move on to, to the left side here. So the way I look at the stress test is a two-step process and is one is how do you stress the heart and then you see the response of the heart and this is what basically the stress test is all about stressing the heart and looking at the response of course you can dive into detail how you stress the heart how you see the response but as again as I said if you boil down the basic concept all it comes down is how do you stress the heart and how do you see the response of that stress on the heart so let's look at this on the left side um, flow chart so here I have listed some of the things or some of the ways how we can stress the heart of course the most easiest way is to have the patient exercise and by far this is the best way you can stress the heart not only you can see how the heart is you know behaving the way but also you can look at some other features that will help you risk stratify the patient for example if the patient had chest pain how did the heart rate went up how did the heart rate came down once the patient start stopped you know exercising what did the blood pressure do what did the EKG changes and things like that so if your patient can do an exercise it is preferred that you have the patient exercise uh, to reach the target heart rate or to stress the heart so when we are asking the patient to do exercise basically we are speeding up the heart and we want to achieve a target heart rate and the target heart rate for any patient is calculated by a simple formula which is 220 minus the age of the patient. For example, if the patient is 60 years of age, so 220 minus 60, so it will be around 160. So the patient's heart rate, you have to get the patient's heart rate around 160, and then you can say, okay, the, the heart is adequately stressed. Not all the patients reach to this 100% of the achieve or the targeted heart rate. So in some patients, we, 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 you know, we take 70 to 80% of their target heart rate achieved as an acceptable you know, situation that the heart has been adequately, adequately stressed. So the way you can do exercise is have the patient lie on a supine bike and they can paddle and you can look at the heart rate and the EKG or you can have them uh, walk on a treadmill so that's one way you can stress the heart another way you can stress the heart is by doing an adenosine scan adenosine as we all know causes vasodilatation and we will come how it stresses the heart now nowadays we have an analog of adenosine which is called reg adenosine it has less side effects and this is what we call like a Lexi scan so when you are sending a patient for a scan 
or a stress test and asking them like you want a Lexi scan basically what you are saying is just you want the patient to get a reg adenosine of course again as I talked about if the patient can do exercise it's best to have them do the exercise and of course if they cannot reach their target heart rate then you can convert that to the to the Lexi scan or reg adenosine test so let's see the basic concept how does it work as we talked about the adenosine causes vasodilatation so here we have a portion of the myocardium labeled as A and there is another portion of the myocardium labeled as B and there are two arteries one and two that are supplying these two different areas of the heart in artery one there is a stenosis here and in two there is no stenosis no blockage so when these patients when you are giving them adenosine as we talked about it causes the vasodilatation so it causes increased capillary flow vasodilatation so what will happen is this area of the myocardium where the capillaries will dilate causes more blood to kind of shunt into this area or area B and then in area A because of the stenosis there won't be that much of a vasodilatation and all the blood will essentially be diverting to area B is diverted to the area B and that is called like a coronary steel so this myocardium or myocardium area A which was already not getting enough blood because of the stenosis now you what you have done is by causing the vasodilatation or hyperemia you have diverted all the blood into the normal myocardium and now this area is now starving and now again as I said we will come to the next portion of how we you how you see the response and how do you do the complete the stress test but right now we are just talking about how you are stressing the heart so basically now what you are stressing or you're stressing the the starving myocardium is giving adenosine and shunting the blood towards the normal myocardium making the other area or the area which had the stenotic blood vessel supplying that area causing even more decreased blood supply another way you can stress the heart is by giving inotropes by far the common way we do that is by dibutamine if the patients are not able to exercise or if they have severe side effects to adenosine like bronchospasm things like that then you can consider dibutamine here I have listed patients who get adenosine or reg adenosine they can get you know heart block they can have nausea they can have severe vomiting the antidote for that is aminophilin theophilin or aminophilin kind of reverses the adenosine and another thing that reverses the adenosine effect or reg adenosine is the caffeine so that is the one reason why when these patients we send them to the to the stress lab we ask them not to eat or drink anything but we also ask them not to drink any coffee and that is because the caffeine in the coffee or caffeine in in the soda can inhibit or is an antidote for the adenosine so they might not achieve that much of hyperemia so again going back as we talked about if the patient is not able to get exercise if they're not able to get reg adenosine you can do dibutamine to stress the heart uh, it's a dibutamine infusion there are different protocols out there how you start and how you look at the heart rate basically what you're doing is increasing their heart rate to kind of reach close to what we talked about the target heart rate and last but not the least we usually don't do that if you don't have any other way of stressing the heart and the patient has got a pacemaker at some point you can have asked the, the pacemaker rep to come to the lab and you can increase the heart rate by increasing the pacemaker settings so in a nutshell this whole left side that what we talked about was how do you stress the heart since now we know that okay we have stressed the heart now you have to combine it how do you see the response the heart is stressed and now you need to see how the heart is responded to it 
and how do you complete the test by saying okay if it is a normal stress test or an abnormal stress test so the by far the most common is by doing an EKG so you can combine that so if somebody does exercise on a treadmill or a bicycle and then you look at their EKG and trying to see how the heart is responding to it if you see ST depressions ST elevations or arrhythmias like VTAC that kind of tells you okay the patient has got the myocardium which is ischemic leading to these EKG changes some of the things that you know might not be able to let you do the EKG portion to respond to see the response is if they have LVH and only LVH by itself is not enough they have to have repolarization abnormalities so patient with LVH with repolarization abnormalities you need to get us you know another way of looking the response to the stress to the heart to complete the stress test again if they have a left bundle branch block you know the EKG portion will be uninterpretable if they have baseline arrhythmias to begin with a lot of PVCs a lot of ectopy and the quality of the tracing might not be be very good and last but not the least is if they have baseline changes if they have baseline ST depression or ST elevations uh, to begin with then the EKG will not be useful when I say ST elevation there is one condition where you can have LV aneurysm if the patient has a previous heart attack and they have LV aneurysm they will continue to have maybe some ST elevations and they will be asymptomatic they might also have Q wave so some of the things that you need to know if you are combining the stress portion with the response and you want to look at the EKG another way you can look at the the response of the heart to the stress is by doing an echocardiogram so again there is no tracer in, involved in this if the patient has got a EKG changes baseline EKG changes which makes it uninterpretable you can do echocardiogram you can combine the echocardiogram with the exercise so you can have the patient walk on a treadmill or a, or a supine bicycle and then once you reach the target heart rate you can do the echocardiogram you can combine it with the dubutamine so if the patient is not able to exercise then you can have them um, dubutamine infusion pacemaker might not be a good idea because we know that the pacemaker usually they, um, they their lead are in the RV they, when you increase the heart rate or increase the pacing there will be some asynchrony there will be some paradoxical motions of the septum so the echocardiogram might not be a good way to look at the response because you might see wall motion abnormalities number three you can, can combine the stressed heart to see the response by doing a nuclear perfusion scan again you can combine that with the exercise you can combine with the adenosine we usually don't do with a dubutamine infusion but exercise and adenosine are the two or reg adenosine are the two ways we stress the heart and then we look at the response of the heart by the nuclear perfusion scan some of the tracers that we use can be thallium technetium uh, mainly for the the spect but there are other tracers that you can use rubidium ftg ammonia i won't be going into detail so basically what you do is, is a two-step test once you 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 take the baseline pictures what we call it the rest pick resting pictures and you see how much of the tracer is taken up by the myocardium and you can use a spect or a pet scanner to do that and then as i said if you do adenosine or reg adenosine basically what you are doing is the area with the blockage percentage blockage you are shunting the blood away from it into the normal myocardium so in the stress test what you will see is that there is a tracer uptake like this depicted in yellow and the area where the blood has been shunted away will appear darker and this is how we kind of compare the stress and the rest images to kind of see if the area involved 
of the myocardium has a blood vessel that is stenotic. Last but not the least, you can also do MRI. You can do use gadolinium. Uh, we can look at the gadolinium late gadolinium enhancement to see if they had previous MI or if they have viable myocardium. There are some some centers that are using exercise MRI, but again, as I said, the MRI might not be very comfortable to the patient because they have to hold their breath. It's longer test, uh, but it can give a lot of information when you are doing MRI, not only the, the perfusion, but also some infiltrative heart diseases, iron deposition, ejection fraction. You can even look at the, the valve pathology as well. I hope this was helpful. Um, have a good day.